What's up everybody? I'm Andrew Mahon from Darium's Competitive Pokemon channel. That's right, the Competitive Pokemon channel. We do deck profiles, gameplay videos, talk about everything the Competitive Pokemon trading card scene has to offer. If you want to learn how to play the Pokemon trading card game or get good at the Pokemon trading card game, head over to the Competitive Pokemon channel. We do lots and lots of discussion about the current metagame, evolvements, new Pokemon, new decks every single day. I'd love to have you guys over there, so go ahead and check it out if you'd like to. But today, we are doing a video on the main channel. Super stoked to be here. We're talking about the newest Pokemon GX that were just revealed from Japan for Sun and Moon 4. That's going to be our Crimson Invasion set being released in English on November 3rd, 2017. Super stoked to be talking about these new Pokemon GX. There are eight Pokemon GX, brand new Pokemon GX coming out in the set, and I have ranked them for you guys here, starting with number eight, going all the way up to what I consider to be the best new Pokemon GX revealed from this Crimson Invasion set. So uh, we're gonna get rolling here. We're gonna have images of the cards for you all to check out and follow along with while we rank these Pokemon GX. Starting out at the number eight spot, we got Guzzlord GX. Guzzlord GX is pretty bad. Sorry to say for all you Guzzlord fans out there. He is a hefty fellow though. Darkness type basic Pokemon GX with 210 hit points. He is an Ultra Beast Pokemon, which is pretty cool, and he's got three attacks. So let's take a look at those. The first attack, Eat Sloppily. Discard the top five cards of your deck. If any of those cards are energy cards, attach them to this Pokemon. First of all, discarding the top five cards of your deck is hugely disruptive. Maybe if Lysander's trump card was still legal or not banned, you know, a card like this might be able to be pulled off. Having to discard the top five cards of your deck and accelerating energy that way, Gotta say though, this thing will win your pre-releases. If you go to a pre-release and you pull this thing and you put it in a deck with 39 other darkness energy, you will eat sloppily and you're going to attach five energy cards to your Pokemon on the first turn of the game. So that's pretty sweet. Otherwise, I don't see that attack as being hugely competitive. The rest of its attacks are just very expensive. For three darkness and two colorless energy, it's got an attack that does 180 damage and then its GX attack costs five darkness energy. Getting five darkness energy onto a Pokemon, I don't care if it's got 210 hit points, that is tough to do. Glutton GX, uh, it does 100 damage, and if your opponent's Pokemon was knocked out by damage from this attack, you take two more prize cards. So it costs a whole lot, but I mean, that could be a game-winning attack. Certainly going to be insane if you pull this thing in a pre-release. You will probably be able to have a tournament-winning deck on your hands with just the Guzzlord GX, being able to eat sloppily, accelerate all your energy on and then just do 180 damage 180 damage 180 damage and then glutton GX to win the game extraordinarily quickly otherwise I think it's just very hard to get five darkness energy onto a Pokemon and not get it immediately immediately knocked out by something like Gardevoir GX it's got a fat retreat cost of four, a fighting weakness, which is to be expected, and a psychic resistance. But all around, I don't see Guzzlord GX just being super playable outside of that pre-release format, as I said. Moving on to number seven, we have Alolan Golem GX. At first, Alolan Golem GX was at the bottom of the barrel for me. It is a stage two Pokemon GX with 250 hit points, lightning type. He's super cool looking. I mean, got that big Hawaiian rock thing going on. So I got a lot of props for Alolan Golem GX for just doing his thing and being a cool Pokemon. And got what he's got that like mustache, a beard thing going on, like pretty cool. But other than that, I don't see him as being super playable. Just lightning as a stage two is kind of an awkward position to be. There are some good basic lightning Pokemon, uh, Tapu Koko GX, you know, Raikou and Pikachu EX. You know, you've got some pretty good basic lightning Pokemon, but like, and there's no real great way to accelerate to a stage two. You got Magnezone to accelerate lightning energy to basic Pokemon, but you wouldn't really want to put Magnezone and another stage two in the same deck, especially with that Raichu GX coming out, which could have potential. Uh, I just don't see Alolan GX really fitting in anywhere in the metagame. Alolan Golem GX has got three attacks though, so let's take a look at them. Hammer in does 80 damage for lightning and two colorless. Super Magnetic Tackle, 200 damage uh, for two lightning and two colorless, and the Pokemon does 50 damage to itself. It's a pretty good attack if you manage to get it pulled off. Doing 50 damage to yourself, of course, is not ideal, but 
we'll deal with it. 200 damage, pretty good damage output. And then this is a crazy GX attack. Heavy Rock GX for two lightning and two colorless. Uh, does 100 damage, and your opponent can't play any cards from their hand during the next turn. Any cards. So imagine Chaos Wheel, you know, uh, Quaking Punch on steroids. This thing locks your opponent entirely up, but only for one turn, and it does 100 damage. So Alolan Golem GX, super cool Pokemon. I got a lot of respect for Alolan Golem, but it is at that number seven spot. I don't really see it going anywhere competitively, just because it gets outclassed by other lightning Pokemon that are just easier to get into play. Moving on to number six, we've got Darium's favorite, Gyarados GX. Sorry, Darium. Gyarados GX is not going to be the best Pokemon GX in this set. It is a hefty, hefty dude though. Gyarados GX raises the bar for stage one Pokemon GX completely with 240 hit points. That is massive for a stage one Pokemon GX. Previously, the top dog was sitting at about 210, so it really raises the roof there. 240 used to be reserved for, you know, just your stage two Pokemon GX, your Decidueye GX. Uh, Gyarados GX is rocking just as many hit points with this absolutely insane. Also worth mentioning for Gyarados GX that Gyarados GX gets a super cool Magikarp to evolve from that can't be damaged from attacks by the opponent when it's on the bench. It's got a nifty little ability which is going to help us get our Gyarados GX into play even though it evolves from very frail Magikarps. So moving on, talking about its attacks, Gyarados GX has got three attacks, no abilities. Let's take a look. Waterfall for water and two colorless does 70 damage, very vanilla. And it's got an attack for a water and four colorless energy, so five energy altogether. Dragon Calamity does 100 plus damage. If there's a stadium card in play, you could discard the stadium and it does 100 more damage. So, potential to do 200 damage, but for five energy, that's just very, very expensive. It's going to be very tough to get five energy onto a Gyarados GX. Yes, we got Aqua Patch. Yes, we got double colorless energy, but you're putting a lot of investment into this Gyarados GX, which, like I said, these expensive Pokemon with these expensive attacks, I feel like they're just going to get knocked out by your Gardevoir GX with that attack that does more damage based on the amount of energy that's on the on the uh, active Pokemon. So I don't really see Gyarados GX being super effective with that Dragon Calamity attack, even though it has the ability to sweep crazy Pokemon, you know, dealing 200 damage, could do 230 with a Choice Band. Uh, I don't really see it going anywhere fast. And then Dreadstorm GX is Gyarados' GX attack for one water energy. You could discard one energy from each of your opponent's Pokemon. I think that's decent. Uh, I'd, I actually prefer like Salazzle GX's attack, Queen Haze GX, which removes all energy from one of your opponent's Pokemon. I think removing one energy from each of your opponent's Pokemon is just a little bit awkward, and it's just really not going to be all that useful. There are just better GX attacks for water, especially Tapu Fini GX's attack, uh, with Tapu Storm GX, just throwing the, de the defending Pokemon back into the deck, I think is far more disruptive as far as water Pokemon GX attacks go. So Gyarados GX coming in at number six for us. Moving on to number five, we've got Executor GX. Executor GX is super cool, if nothing else. I think that Executor GX, you know, does have some nifty things going on for it, could potentially be playable, even though some of its attacks are very expensive. Executor GX has three attacks, and let's take a look. Tropical Head for one grass energy does 20 damage times the number of energy attached to this Pokemon to one of your opponent's Pokemon. So it's a snipe attack, which is pretty cool. And it's unlimited in damage output as well. So for one grass energy, you can snipe 20 to wherever you want on your opponent's side of the field. If you have a grass and a double colorless, now all of a sudden you're sniping 60 damage to wherever you want on your opponent's side of the field. And so on and so forth. If you have five energy attached to Executor, you could put 100 damage wherever you want on your opponent's side of the field. I think the Tropical Head does have some potential in the metagame. There's a lot of good sniping cards right now. Tapu Coco promo is very good seeing play in a lot of decks. And maybe Executor has some potential along, alongside other sniping cards like that. Moving on for a grass and three colorless energy, Executor could do 120 damage and your opponent's active Pokemon is now confused. Pretty expensive attack, 120 damage, not all that much for four energy, and confusion is not the best status condition in the world either. 
the, the GX attack on Executor is Tower Go Round GX, and it does 180 damage, and you can move as many energy attached to your Pokemon, to your other Pokemon, in any way you like. So 180 damage for four energy, pretty good. Definitely good damage output. And then you have the ability to move your energy wherever you would like on your, on your side of the field for one turn. So a very powerful effect as well. Even though it costs four energy to use this attack, you could diversify your energy afterwards, spread it out so a guard of war gx can't come in and just knock you out very easily i do like that also executor gx is going to pair pretty well with that venusaur that's being released in shining legends coming up here very shortly the venusaur from shining legends doubles the effectiveness of your grass energy so it turns one grass energy into two and executor gx could definitely take advantage of that i mean being able to do all these attacks for half the cost we need to take that into context when thinking about the potential of these pokemon because you know all of a sudden uh, executor sniping attack could do 40 anywhere for just one energy if Venusaur is in play and Tower Ground GX could be played for only two grass energy making this executor card much more playable which is the reason why I gave it the number five spot moving on to our number four we have Nihilego, 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 Nihilego GX. Okay, it's that psychic jellyfish, all right? Uh, sorry that I butchered your name, Nihilego GX. Uh, it's got 180 hit points, basic Pokemon, and I love this ability, Nihilistic Light. When you play this Pokemon from your hand to your bench, both active Pokemon are now poisoned and confused. Status conditions are very good. I mean, being able to poison and confuse is very strong and very disruptive on your opponent's side of the field. And just being able to get that effect with just the benching of a Pokemon is completely insane. I think that's a very powerful effect for an ability. I look forward to seeing how this card can be incorporated into decks, maybe alongside Super Scoop Up or Acerola to get to reuse that Nihilistic Light. I mean, at the very least, it gives your damage output plus 10 on the turn that you play it because your opponent's Pokemon is going to become poisoned. So it gives you 10 more damage, you know, to the attack that you get per turn. So that's pretty cool. It's got two attacks, Lock Up, which does 120 damage, and your opponent active Pokemon cannot retreat during their next turn. Costs three Psychics, so it's kind of expensive, not a great attack. You're really not going to be using Lock Up all that often, I imagine, with the Nihilego. You're going to probably be using it for its ability and and this absolutely insane GX attack. So let's take a look at it. Parasite GX, add the top two cards of your opponent's deck to their prize cards for three psychic energy. What? I mean, that's crazy. You give them two more prize cards to take. That is pretty wild for a GX deck. Certainly disruptive, going along with the already disruptive nature of, nature of this card. The fact that it induces status conditions when it comes into play. Now you have the ability to add two more prize cards to your opponent's prizes. That's wild. I mean, so they could start out the game with eight prize cards if they haven't taken any prize cards yet, if you're able to pull off a quick Parasite GX. Not exactly sure how competitive Nihilego will be just because it's, you know, it, it's psychic type, okay? So, I mean, Garbodor, Trash Lights Garbodor, good psychic type Pokemon. You know, you, Espeon GX, good psychic type Pokemon. But is there really a great way to get three psychic energy onto a Nihilego GX in order to use this GX attack? That's why I think this card is pretty balanced because there's not really a great way. Maybe people are having Lunala GX dreams. Lunala GX has got an ability that allows you to move your psychic energy around. Maybe you could play a Lunala GX deck and then move your psychic energy onto a Nihilego uh, for a surprise you know, uh, surprise Parasite GX, make your opponent have more prize cards. Uh, that's a possibility, but only time will tell how realistic that option is. Moving on to our top three Pokemon GX from Crimson Invasion. At the number three spot, I originally had this card at number two, but I had to move someone else up just one more spot. I've got Kartana GX. Kartana GX is a metal uh, 170 hit point basic Pokemon GX with an awesome ability and two great attacks. I mean, this card is just well-rounded, awesome. It's already got an archetype that it could fit into. We've got Metagross GX decks. We've got uh, Solgaleo GX decks. It could fit into either of them effortlessly. So let's take a look. Kartana GX, it's got an ability cut down. When you play this Pokemon from your hand to your bench, you may discard a special energy attached to one of your opponent's Pokemon. So an enhanced hammer, 
on an ability. That is super cool. It's splashable. This ability could be useful in any type of deck that you want to remove energy from your opponent's side of the field. I love that it kind of nerfs Guard of War GX. I mean, you're taking the double colorless energy off of Guard of War GX, uh, but there's lots of decks that play double colorless energy. Any deck that plays, uh, you know, Nine Tails GX is also going to be playing double colorless energy. Uh, unfortunately for Metal, these are matchups that are already pretty manageable, so removing the double colorless energy from decks that are weak to metal is not the best thing in the world, but there are still a good amount of decks that play special energy. A lot of Galissapod decks are playing rainbow energy, and uh, you know, double colorless energy is still a very popular energy type used in many, many different kinds of decks. So I think that Kartana GX will see play for that cutdown ability, and it can be splashed into various things just for that alone. It does have two awesome attacks to boot, which are going to be usable in those Metagross decks and in Sogaleo decks if you choose. Gale Sword for a metal and two colorless does 70 damage, and you can shuffle this Pokemon and all cards attached to it into your deck. So kind of a nice little hit and run attack. Super cool. I like the option to do that, especially in something like Metagross. I think that that's just a nice little option to have. You could accelerate three energy onto it, Gale Sword, and get it up out of there if that's what you want to do. Also, Blale Gade... Blade GX, sorry, Blade GX. I was combining Blade GX with Gale Sword. Uh, Blade GX, take one of your prize cards for one metal energy. That's it, you just take a prize card. Super cool game ending attack. I mean, it's a GX attack, but I ended up actually moving this Pokemon Kartana down to number three, because I realized that Metagross GX is going to be the deck that you use Kartana GX in the most often, and Kartana GX takes up your GX attack using this awesome attack, which takes a prize, but a lot of games you're going to be using Metagross's GX attack algorithm GX in order to set up, which drastically reduces the amount of effectiveness that you're going to get out of a Blade GX. So, although Kartana GX super cool, it's got a GX attack that just automatically takes a prize. It is a very cool Pokemon. I like that ability. Uh, I did rate it at a number three because I think that the top two got a lot more to offer the meta game at a whole. At the number two spot, we have Salavi Silvali GX. Sorry, Silvali GX. It evolves from Type Null. It's a stage one, 200 in hit point, colorless GX Pokemon. It's got an ability and two attacks. I think this thing is just totally, totally sweet. It's colorless, so you could play it with any type of Pokemon. I think it's a very splashable uh, card, and a lot of archetypes have potential to just be built from this thing alone. I think Silvali GX just has a lot of potential uh, for the game as a whole. Expanded format, standard format, this card has just got potential written all over it. Let's take a look at its ability. Gyro Unit. As long as this Pokemon is in play, all of your basic Pokemon have zero retreat cost. We have seen how effective of a card Dark Rikes from Dark Explorers has been with that Dark Cloak ability, just giving all Pokemon with Darkness Energy on them free retreat. Silvali GX uh, gives all basic Pokemon get free retreat. I mean, that's wild. You could splash this, you could use it with any type of basic Pokemon, build any type of basic deck around this card, and they're all going to have the freedom uh, of free retreat, which is absolutely fantastic, very powerful, but it goes perfectly with its other attacks as well. Turbo Drive for three colorless does 120 damage and attaches a basic energy card from your discard pile to one of your bench Pokemon. So not only are you giving any basic Pokemon free retreat, you also have a built-in way to accelerate to them, which is totally insane. I mean, this is just kind of reminds me a lot of Manetric EX, right? Mega Manetric EX had an attack that could do 110 damage and you accelerated two energy to your bench, which was cool because you could, you know, pair this with other Pokemon and you could accelerate in that type of way. Uh, Turbo Drive accelerates one basic energy, but it's colorless, which means you could pair it with any kind of secondary attacker. And I just love the splashable nature of this card, giving your uh, Pokemon free retreat. I think that this just has a lot of potential. It's kind of a one-two punch kind of card, giving your Pokemon free retreat, also being able to accelerate that to them and deal a significant amount of damage in the process, 120 damage 
nothing to scoff at. The GX attack to boot is really good. Reminds me a lot of Lycanroc GX's attack for three colorless energy. You got Rebellion GX. It does 50 damage times the amount of the number of your opponent's bench Pokemon, uh, which is super cool. So if they have three bench Pokemon, gonna be able to do 150 damage with it with a choice band that's 180. They have four bench Pokemon, you're rocking 205 bench Pokemon, 250 damage, knocking out just about anything you might possibly want to. So I think Silvali GX has just a lot of potential as a card, has a lot of potential to just birth archetypes all its own based on the backbone of the Silvali GX uh, by itself. And that's why I've ranked it at the number two spot. Moving on to what I consider to be the best Pokemon GX from Crimson Invasion is Buzzwool GX. Now, I've got a little bit of a bias here. Buzzwool GX reminds me a whole lot of Landorus GX, which is a card that I was able to win a regional championship with a few years ago. And this thing just reminds me so much of it. But Landorus GX was game changing in its own right, which is why I think that Buzzwool GX is also going to be a game changer. It also just fits perfectly into our standard format. There are so many cards that jive well with this thing. Let's talk about it. Buzzwool GX has got 190 hit points. It's a fighting type basic Pokemon GX with three attacks. The first attack, Jet Punch, does 30 damage. This attack does 30 damage also to one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So it does 30-30 for one energy. There are so many good snipe Pokemon in this format. There's Alola Ninetales GX. There's Tapu Koko Promo. Uh, add Buzzwool GX into the mix and we have just a whole horde of Pokemon that can snipe the opponent's bench. We also have Espeon EX, which is lifting up evolution cards, revealing their weak basic Pokemon, and we have a definitely have an archetype on our hands here. I mean, Buzzwool GX with that jump punch, jet punch attack could get attacking as early as the first turn of the game, and it has things to boost that damage output even further. It starts off with 30-30. Then, if you add a strong energy, a special energy card that increases your fighting Pokemon's damage output by 20, then you're doing 50 damage to the active, 30 to the bench. If you add Choice Band into the mix, now all of a sudden, you're doing 80 damage to the opponent's active Pokemon and 30 to the bench. That's 110 damage for one energy. That's super insane. Buzzwool GX also has Acerola, a card that can lift up a damage Pokemon. So as soon as it takes damage, you can lift the thing up, put it right back down, and just continue on using Jet Punch to your heart's content. There is also Regirock EX in format. Yeah, I totally forgot about that. Regirock EX can also boost your fighting type Pokemon's uh, damage by 10. It has an ability that boosts your damage by 10 for each uh, Regirock EX that you have in play. So if you were to have four Regirock EX in play, a Choice Band, and a Strong Energy, you'd be doing 150 damage to the active and 30 to the bench for one energy. That's 180 damage for one energy. This card definitely, definitely has potential. And the fact that it only takes one energy to attack means that it's not going to be weak to your stereotypical Gardevoir GX decks. The fact that it has 190 hit points means that it's also going to be more resistant, more resilient to your Gardevoir GX decks. It's also going to be tougher for your opponent's Metagross GX decks to knock out, even though they can get there, you know, with, uh, with their Necrozma GX, they could get there, uh, you know, with whatever that metal anchor thing is that gives them 10 more damage. I forget the name of it. Uh, anyways, it could get there, but 190 is still more difficult for these Pokemon to knock out than it would be otherwise. Just got a great amount of hit points, and it's still got two more attacks I haven't even talked about yet. For three fighting energy, Knuckle Impact does 160 damage, and the Pokemon can't attack during your next turn. Not gonna lie, most of the time you are not going to be using Knuckle Impact, but it's there in case you find yourself with three energy attached and you wanna take a big knockout. The GX attack is Absorption GX. For three fighting energy, it does 40 damage uh, for each of your remaining prize cards. Honestly, I'm not even super impressed by this GX attack and I don't think that you'll be using it too terribly often in this deck. Buzzwall GX is really here just for that jet punch attack. I mean, this thing, you could build a whole deck around the sniping ability of Buzzwall GX. I think it has just got a whole lot of potential. Pair it with things like Tapu Koko, maybe even play it with the Silvali GX and uh, can give this thing free retreat because, uh, you know, because Buzzwall GX does have a retreat cost of two, so it is a little bit hefty, but you can use that Silvalli GX and get it in and out of the active po 
active position with ease. So that wraps it up for my top eight Pokemon GX from the Crimson Invasion set. I'm super excited about this set. I think it's got a lot going on and I'm excited to see how it makes the metagame evolve. Thank you all for checking out this video and head on over to Darium's competitive Pokemon so that we could talk about competitive Pokemon scene every single day. We could talk about decks, you know, uh, gameplay videos. We could do, I uh, do card of the day videos where I just describe certain cards and why they're impactful to the metagame. Uh, give out deck lists all the time. I mean, we just have a lot of fun over there and I would love for you guys to be part of that community as well. Thank you all for watching the video. Like the video. Let me know what you all think of the new Pokemon GX in the comments below. Uh, share the video. Subscribe to the channel. Peace.